Shalom. Baruch Abba. Hello, I welcome you in the great and awesome name of Yahuwah Elohim as we await the coming of Adonai Yahushua HaMashiach. We praise Yahuwah for his great works and the understanding in his word he has given us to share with you. To the Kodashim out there, Torah Rabbah, thank you so much for your comments and for your support. If you are joining us here for the first time, I always recommend you go back to the orientation videos, orientation one and orientation two. I'm sure they will answer uh, any questions you might have uh, regarding the Adu. Now that we are assembled, um, we're going to be dealing with death now. And as always, whenever you deal with the dead, demonic play comes into action. And it is no different, especially for Yahushua. Here, Yahuwah himself alerts us to this. The writings he has inspired are coveted by demons. And demons roam in the invisible realm. And after death, the body moves on to the next phase, to a realm that is very real and never seen by the physical world we live in. However, the beings that, ro that roam there at times have shown themselves through manifestation. They dwell in high places and influence the minds of people in ways we cannot see. But the fruit of their actions are clear. Demons lie about the word of Yahuwah. The evidence is they do not embrace the truth to restore it. So let's go to the account now and follow the body of Yahushua. <clears throat> Dabarim chapter 32, we'll begin the song of Moshe in verse 48 this week, followed by the witness over in Yochanan chapter 19, we'll be looking at verse 38. Then Yahuwah spoke to Moshe that very same day, saying, Go up this mountain of the Abarim, Mount Nebo. After this, Yosef of Ramah. The events going on now are events that flow according to what Yahuwah is saying up in Debarim. Everything that happens in Yochanan is happening after this, just as it is written or in the likeness of this. So we follow Yahushua's body from here. Then Yahuwah spoke to Moshe. Moshe, his name means drawn, so down in Yochanan, the one drawn is Yosef. So Yahuwah here is speaking to Yosef. And he spoke to him that very same day that the flaming sword came to claim the soul of Yahushua. This word, Yosef, is of Hebrew origin. H3130 means Yahuwah has added. This is now the corresponding reference to the great name of Yahuwah in the survey line. Yahushua, having given up his speaking in the prior video, and this is fitting as Joseph is now added to walk us through what is happening with the body of Yahushua. It is likened to a mountain because of the greatness of what is going to be done there. It is going to be exalted to be worshipped. People go to high places to worship and the mountain is symbolic of that. Yahuwah says, go up this mountain, this high place of the Abarim. H5682 means regions beyond. In other words, regions beyond earthly understanding. This is a behind the scenes look at stuff people don't know regarding this account in world history. Some good news we didn't get from Christianity. Now, according to the definition, this is describing 
a range of mountains on the east of the Yarden, in the land of Moab, opposite Jericho, Mount Nebo. Mount Nebo is part of this mountain range. This is a particular mountain in the mountains. Go up this mountain of the Abarim, Mount Nebo. Yahuwah says to Yosef, go up there to this place called Nebo. H5015 is a prophet, a Nabi, a Babylonian deity. This is a demon who presided over learning and letters. It corresponds to the Greek mythological character known as Hermes and the Latin one called Mercury. Also the one in Mitzrayim called Thoth. The thing Moshe and Yahushua have in common here is they are both Nebaim. And all of those definitions concerning those demons were in the definition uh, lines for Nebo, for Nebo, age 50-15. So, um, Yahushua and Moshe, they are both Nebaim, prophets, presiding over scripture. One has written what the other has fulfilled. Moshe wrote what Yahushua has fulfilled. Mount Nebo can be seen in the place where Yosef is from in the survey line on the screen. It is likened to the definition of Mount Nebo, or as it reads in the survey line, after this. The place he is from is named after this. Ramah, H7414, is a proper locative now. A hill, the heights. This is a high place, a mountain. It is also used as a place of illicit worship, something forbidden by laws, rules, or customs. The verb means to be lofty, exalted. It means to be lifted up, to exalt oneself, to magnify oneself. This is pride, breaking all the rules of laws and customs. Like the names of those demons, the nations have conjured up in mythology. They are real and found in the definition, as I mentioned, for Nebo. They are offspring of that demon from Babel called Nebo. They are demons influencing men presiding over learning and letters. Rema is the result of what demons presiding over letters and learning cause people to do, and that is illicit worship, or as it reads after this. In other words, this is the fruit of it, and all of the following verses for this survey is likened after this account written by Moshe in Deborim. So legal worship is going on here, or will go on. So Yosef is from this type of place. This does not mean that Yosef was evil. Throughout the scripture of truth, demons have played a role. Whenever you're dealing with the truth as it relates to scripture, there is always going to be a demonic adversary. These are supernatural beings that dwell in high places to prevent the truth given by Yahuwah Elohim for salvation from spreading. Demons, you will find them on mountains, churches, mosques, and synagogues, high places that govern scriptures. This mountain that Yahuwah is sending um, Moshe is warning us of that. So we are to beware because he used Moshe to give us the scripture of truth. So the warning here is demons exist and their game, their game plan is to destroy the works of Yahuwah for salvation. So we're going up to the high places now where demons both dwell and plan to thwart everything Yahuwah 
is doing with Moshe. Yahuwah knows this and sends him up there anyway. Because the truth given on earth will be exalted in the face of opposition. Which is in the land of Moab across from Yericho. Being a taught one of Yahushua, but secretly for fear of the Utah, which is in the land of Moab, Moab means their ancestors. The learning and the letters the demons are presiding over is obviously the scripture of truth Yahuwah gave to Moshe because Yosef was a taught one of Yahushua, a Lamud. And all of his teachings were based on and found in those scriptures of truth. Yahushua came to fulfill all that Moshe wrote about. So Yosef was in the land of their ancestors. This is all set up according to the words after this from the top survey line, the likeness of what is written by Moshe. Across from Jericho, meaning its moon, things done in the moonlight are usually things done in secret, not much light. Deeds done in the dark after this. Over in Yochanan, it reads, but secretly for fear of the Utah. Yosef was a taught one by night, secretly. He was not seen with Yahushua openly during the day. Also, as Jericho means its moon, so the Utah are seen as the it in its moon. This is where the demon is presiding with the Utah, the Jews, and whoever else was here throughout the course of history. Also notice for the written account here on the screen, as Yericho means its moon, the moon regulates the followers of Yahuwah. They follow a lunar calendar in order to worship at the time appointed in the scripture of truth. Everybody in this line to survey was doing that. The taught one, Yahushua, and the Utah. Yosef was in the land of Moab. This is the taught one of Yahushua here, in here on the screen. They are across from the Utah. See it there on the screen. Out of fear. Across from Jericho. He was not following the same moon as the Utah. Yahushua was leading him somewhere else according to the truth found in the scripture. He was taught differently. And if you're going to have success dealing with the Jews in the political world regarding the truth of anything, you're going to have to do it secretly. <laughs> Can't really convince them of the truth because they will threaten to take everything you got. Just as Whoopi Goldberg Nick Cannon, and every other person in a position of influence speak out against what they're doing, especially those doing those things that are wrong. You need to do it secretly because the fear is you're taking a big risk. <laughs> now, the Jews to this day have not followed the moon to determine the appointed times to worship Yahuwah. This is called illicit worship. So do not follow their calendar. Y'all need to check behind these people. Yahuwah has gone to great extent just to have the scripture written so that he can bring the things written to pass. He's going to do that whether you're paying attention or not. Better to pay attention. This way everyone can have confidence to worship him because of the prophecies that come to pass. It is clear that he is to be worshiped. And it's also clear that there have been some lies taught to people centered around what is needed for everlasting life. And if you think for one minute this does not affect you, then you have lived your entire life in vain. 
and destined for the pit. For those of you who do care to find out the appointed times, you can go to the Farmer's Almanac to find a lunar calendar that shows the phases of the moon cycle for each month of the year. We covered this in the first witness of a star. Compare your finding with theirs. This way you find out the truth. The same moon they have over in Israel is the same one we have over here. Same one. The same one that governs the whole world. There is only one. They have not created another moon. Neither can they alter the course of the one Elohim created. People who make up these lies design them to make fools out of you. And those who promote and follow that type of lie concerning the moon embrace it because it gives them a reason not to follow the commands that come with the appointed times. Saying it cannot be known for certain. That's what they say. They use that as an excuse not to even try to obey what Yahuwah has established. That's because they want to do their own thing. Then they confuse you with lies using conspiracy theories. Using educated religious people who teach sophisticated lies, not even found in the scripture. And because of paying attention to the wrong thing, which is what they lead you to do, that is why many people cannot discern the times. There's only one spiritual truth, and it is written in the Adu. It's always been there. Because if they do not speak according to what is being shown here, it is because there never was and is no truth in them. So when you find the truth, stick with it. Stay away from every wind of doctrine. If it doesn't make sense. It's a lie. It's Yericho, their moon, the thing that regulates them. View the land of Canaan. And he asked Pilatus that he might take away the body of Yahushua. As we survey the line, view the Alephta land. The mark of the accusative is on the land. This is spiritual, that part of the land. This is the earth, the soil, the body of Yahushua, seen down in Yochanan. The Alephta land his body, Yahuwah says to him, go view it. Go view the body. It was the land of Canaan. That's where it was. H3667 means lowland. Canaan. He was lifeless. The verb means humbled, subdued, and brought down. To be brought down into subjection. The subjection is seen in the verse when Yosef asked Pilatus that he might take away the body of Yahushua. The body of Yahushua was the subject of the conversation. His body was subdued, brought down to death. Lowland, Canaan, go view the Olive of Thailand, Eretz. He did that and then asked Pilatus that he might take away the body of Yahushua. which I give to B'nai Yisrael as a possession. And Pilatus gave him permission. So he came and took the body of Yahushua. Yahuwah is seen as I. So over in Yochanan, both Yosef, seen as him and he, and this line to survey, along with Yahushua, are both representing the name of Yahuwah. Both names are of a breed origin, so together they represent B'nai Yisrael. Yahuwah is giving Yosef the body of Yahushua, which was in the possession of Pilatus, who is Latin. Yahuwah is overseeing this whole account to bring it to pass. You see it in the survey line. Also, it is recalled from prior verses, I, even I, am he. 
Yahuwah is giving the body of Yahushua back to B'nai Yisrael. It was their possession. So the most important part of the miracle that was going to happen could occur in the possession of B'nai Yisrael. It had to happen to fulfill scripture. Because if this miracle that Yahuwah is going to do with the body of Yahushua would have happened while in the possession of the Romans, it would only serve to validate the lie they were going to eventually sell to the world. This was for B'nai Yisrael. Both Yosef and Yahushua's name, as I mentioned, are of Hebrew origin. So Yosef, with permission, takes possession of what is theirs. And Yosef is foretold to do this in several prophecies about him, most notably the one given by Yaakov in Bereshit chapter 49, and in Shemot, Shemot, here Yosef is coming to get his bones, to carry them with him, to fulfill the scripture that reads in Bereshit. I'm going to read chapter 50, verse 25. You don't have to turn there. I'm just going to read it. Read it. It reads, Then Yosef took an oath. From the Alatah B'nai Yisrael. These are believers at a later time in history, as well as that current time, saying, Elohim will surely visit you, and you shall carry up my Alatah bones from here. Mark of the accusative is on his bones as well. At Asimoti. And this they did. This they did being recorded in Shemot chapter 13, verse 9. I'm just going to read that one, too. Shemot chapter 13, verse 19, excuse me, reads, And Moshe took the olive tar bones of Yosef with him, for he had placed the olive tar B'nai Yisrael under a solemn oath saying, Elohim will surely visit you, and you shall carry up my bones from here with you. So Elohim is visiting them right now, and they are seen in the survey lines gathered around the body of Yahushua, going up to mountains, high places to perform the final act of the prophecy here on earth so that it may be fulfilled for the written account. Moshe is doing this in the song as it lines up beautifully with the account in Yochanan. The final act of this event is for those who follow the Aleph Tah. For those who follow the Aleph Tah. When we go to stand in the presence of Yahuwah for this witness, these bones are going to come up for your testimony. So carry them with you. Amen. Devarim chapter 32, 50 will line up with Yochanan chapter 19. We'll be looking at verse 39 and 40. and die on the mountain which you ascend and be gathered to your people. And Nicodemus, who at first came to Yahushua by night, also came, bringing a mixture of more and ahalim, about a hundred pounds and die on the mountain which you ascend. You here in the survey line is Nicodemus down in Yochanan. The word for die is moot. H4191 means to die, to kill, to have one executed. All of this is going to happen in these verses. To die according to the dictionary definition means to stop living. 
The word Nico Damas is only found in the witness of Yochadon. It is listed five times in all of scripture. And this is the fifth and last time you will see his name any further in the account. It is dying right here. Even Yahushua has stopped living at this point. Now the word kill has two definitions in the dictionary. The second definition for kill means to put an end to or cause the failure or defeat of something. This is also a killing going on here. That part of the definition for moot, that means to kill. To put to death by dispatch, meaning to deal with and send off to a destination for a purpose. So there's a purpose going on here. The purpose is so the meaning of his name, not the name itself, would be dispatched to the greatness of what Yahuwah was going to accomplish with the body of Yahushua. We will get to the meaning of his name shortly. Notice Nico Damas is seen in the verse down in Yochanan ascending. He first came to Yahushua by night. Then it says, he also came. This is ascending. He came twice. The word is written two times. He ascended. H5927 means to go up, meet, and visit. Yahushua is seen as the mountain in the verse. This is the high place where supernatural and spiritual things are both spoken about and done. The place where all these people are meeting. Moshe, Yoshef, and now Nicodemus. Nicodemus is now ascending on it. Yahuwah is going to do something, and he is using all three for the written account to demonstrate the power of his written word by preparing the body of Yahushua. The mountain that Nico Damas was to die on it was the body of Yahushua. The meaning of his name characterizes the ultimate victory that Yahushua will possess, is dispatched. As a conqueror, of the people, meaning Yahushua will overcome and take control of, of uh, the people, will take control of something. So Yahuwah sends Yosef to get the body, but he sends Nico Damas to die, to deal with something regarding dying, which is the reason for the special fragrances so that Yahushua can have the victory that is found in the meaning of his name. We notice these names are carefully chosen to do specific things in high places, symbolizing the greatness of the miraculous comeback by Yahushua that Yahuwah is about to perform. It is recognized by the Moor and Ahalim. These are fragrances. The more, the Greek word there that, uh, that was there is of Hebrew origin, and it takes you to H4753, which is more. And I have it here on the screen. It's an Hebrew word. It is part of the ingredients used to make a liquid fragrance, instructed by Yahuwah to make the Kodesh anointing oil, found in Shemot, chapter 30. Verse 23, that's Exodus. It was costly and used to anoint uh, everything from the Achel of meeting and the Aron, where the testimony was kept, to the lampstand and the base of the Mitzbeach, everything. And the Ahalim is first used in the prophecy concerning Bil'am ben Beor when Balak asked him to curse Yisrael. Instead, he gave a barach, and it is found in Bemidbar, Numbers chapter 24, verse 6, 
You can go back and read it later. I'm just going to bring the reference regarding these fragrances, particularly, particularly uh, the Ahalim. That's what we're talking about here. This is something that is planted by Yahuwah. The prophecy reads, The utterance of him who hears the words of Ah, who sees the vision of Shaddai, who falls down with eyes wide open. How lovely are your tents, Yaakob, your dwellings, Yisrael, like valleys that stretch out, like gardens by the riverside, like Ahalim, planted by Yahuwah, like cedars beside the waters. He shall pour water from his buckets, and his seed shall be in many waters. His king shall be higher than Agog, and his kingdom shall be exalted. Al brings him out of Mitzrayim. He has strength like a wild ox. He shall consume the nations, his enemies. He shall break their bones and pierce them with his arrows. Payback. He bows down, he lies down as a lion. And as a lion, who shall arouse him? Baruch is he who berates you, and cursed is he who curses you. With these mixtures, all of this is added to the mountain, which is the body of Yahushua. That prophecy is being fulfilled. Yahuwah is going to add life to the body of Yahushua, giving him the victory over death and the grave. This is how he will conquer the people. This is added to Yosef, whose name means Yahuwah has added. And now we are shown here for the written, the written account. What else is added? Nicodemus, who at first came to Yahushua by night, also came, as it reads. So he was added. Nico Damas, G3530, means conqueror of the people, has two, two root words. One is G3534, Nikos. Nikos means victory, to utterly vanquish. The word Nikos, this is best understood and where it is used. Of the four times it is used, three are found in 1 Corinthians. And they all have reference to the miracle that will be performed on the body of Yahushua. And I'm going to read um, the three in 1 Corinthians, chapter 15, verse 54 through 58. You don't have to turn there. I'm just going to read it. But I'm going to have to read all of what Shaul spoke in those verses for context. He says, Behold. I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible has put on incorruption and this mortal has put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. Nikos. O death, where is your sting? O Sheol, where is your victory? Nikos. The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to Yahuwah who gives us the victory. Nikos. Through our Adonai Yahushua HaMashiach. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Adon, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Adon. The end of that. So, yeah, he had a Nikos. 
he also came with Yosef, who has now added him into the mix. The second word in Nico Damas is Damas. G1218, it means the people, the mass of people, assembled in a public place. After this miracle, Yahushua will have this type of victory over the people. Overcoming death solidifies his reign of spiritual authority and serves as a basis for spiritual understanding. A new religion, if you will, to conquer the people after he overcomes death. Now the verb of uh, Damas G1218, Deo, means to bind, tie, or fasten. This is what's going to be done to the body of Yahushua. It was going to be bound and fastened with the things Nico Damas is seen within the survey line. He came bringing a mixture of more and a halim, about 100 pounds. This is how Yahushua was going to be gathered to his people. It's going to be gathered to his people to fulfill what Yahuwah spoke to Moshe regarding his body in the top survey line in Moshe's time. Yahuwah gathered the body of Moshe to a special place unseen until the time of this event that was to be fulfilled by the one who was to come in the likeness of Moshe to perform what is necessary to satisfy the wrath of Yahuwah against sin and release the soul from the power of death and the grave. Here for the account in Yochanan, the body of Yahushua is likened to the body of Moshe, and the gathering he receives is likened to what is written in Bereshit, chapter 50, verse 26. Um, we're going to read that. You don't have to turn there. We already read verse 25. Verse 26 reads, this is concerning Yosef, so Yosef died. He put them under an oath, and then he died just as it says in this survey line. Being 110 years old, and they embalmed him, and he was put in an aron, what we know as a coffin in Mitzrayim. The embalming consisted of a mixture of more and ahalim, about 100 pounds. This is added to the body as a preservative, wrapped up with it. Yahuwah has added. Nico Damas, who first came to Yahushua by night, we're going to look at this word here, night, G3571 is nukes. Nukes means night. It is used metaphorically as the time of death. Also the time for deeds of sin and shame. These are the things he spoke to Yahushua about doing his visit at night. The account is found in the third chapter of Yochanan. You can go back and read it when you get a chance. In summary, he was a ruler of the Utah. And it records, they knew Yahushua was from Yahuwah Elohim because of the signs. So they knew that. The discussion was about being born again. He wondered how could a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? And Yahushua answered, most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born of water in the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of Yahuwah. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. He was talking about the soul. He said, do not marvel that I said to you, you must be born again. In short, you're not going to have to worry about that part. The birth here on this earth is going to be the same as it's been from the beginning of time. What he did not understand is this had nothing to do with the flesh, other than the animation of it for the earthly body, but only for a short time. So the body of Yahushua is here now being prepared by him. Maybe after this he'll understand. The soul is the thing that was obliterated. His soul had to be born again. This was the spirit. Yahuwah had to bring it back. 
having destroyed it with the flaming sword. This is next level stuff, and no one on this earth could fully comprehend it. Were it not for the Edu, we would have no clue. Yahuwah has revealed this, so Nico Damas would not have understood this. And verse 13 of Yochanan, uh, in chapter 3, sums up why. It had never been done before, as Yahushua told him. No one has ascended to the Shemaim, but he who came down from the Shemaim, that is, the Ben of Yahuwah, who was in the Shemaim. In other words, he came down to do this. What Yahushua did with Alazar is not the same thing. It's not the same thing. And neither was any other time someone was brought back from the dead in Scripture. It's not the same thing. Even Shaul brought somebody back to life. So he would not have understood this. He would not have understood that. And this was made clear because of the analogy Yahushua used with the wind. He didn't understand that either. And if you read the account, Yahushua wondered how he even became a leader in Israel. And Yahushua would no doubt feel the same way about the Jews in our time here today. Because they do not have a clue about anything written in the Torah by Moshe. As we continue, just as Aharon, your brother, died on Mount Har and was gathered to his people. Then they took the body of Yahushua and bound it in strips of linen with the spices, as the custom of the Utah is to bury. This is another likeness that the body of Yahushua receives. It was just as Aharon, the brother of Moshe, received. Aharon, the light brainer, the brother of Moshe, died in a high place on Mount Har. Mm -hmm. It's a high place, something done to now be exalted, made mention of, regarding the body of Yahushua here in the written account. This occurrence is found in Bemidbar, Numbers chapter 20, verse 25 through 28. Okay. We have to go there to find out this likeness. I'm going to put this one on the screen. Okay. I have here verses 25 to 26. Um, It reads, take Aharon and Alazar has been and bring them up to Mount Har and strip the Aleftar Aharon of his Aleftar garments. Strip the, Alef strip the Aleftar of his garments and put them on Alazar has been. The mark of the accusative is on Alazar. It's on Aharon the garments, and his ben, Alazar. So Yahushua is all of this. Okay. For Aharon shall be gathered to his people and die there. Here in the story, Aharon literally dies. Not like in the case where Nico Damas died being stricken from the written account. Okay, looking at the story in the top line of survey there. Look at the word of Yahuwah for the written account on this one. This is beautiful. Notice how it is worded. For Aharon, I'm reading in Bemidbar, shall be gathered to his people and die there. Normally it reads, die there and then be gathered to the people who are dead. As it was worded for Moshe, you see it in the top line of survey. 
Here, Aharon's reads opposite. In the verse, he has gathered to his people in death first. The body of Yahushua is in the survey line. He is now dead too. Then Bamidbar reads, and die there. So this account is where Aharon and the things pertaining to him are now laid to rest in this high place with Yahushua, a Nabi like Moshe. Only Yahuwah can do this. This is beautiful. Also of note, here the mark of the accusative is on Aharon and his garments. This was the Alaptah light bringer. And they were the Alaptah's garments. They were stripped and put on his bin, the Alaptah Alazar. Elohim helped is the meaning of his name, the Alaptah Alazar. This is Yahushua. He is the one Elohim is now helping in the verse, helping to clothe the body. He is the olive and the top. This is seen in the verse when they took the body of Yahushua and bound it in strips of linen with the spices, as the custom of the Utah is to bury. So there's more stripping going on here. The garments stripped from the verse up in Bamidbar are then used to bind the body of Yahushua with the spices. This is the analogy on the screen for the written account. It's beautiful to help you see what Yahuwah is doing here. In this way, Yahushua was gathered to his people to fulfill the survey line and Dabarim for Aharon. And we all know that Alazar and Moshe came down from that mountain. So Yahushua is getting up. Amen. And we know he did get up. There's much more going on in the verses that can be gleaned from all of this. And there's no way to gather it all in one setting. But the boundaries of the field have been set and the lines are clear. So feed on what is given and strengthen yourself, and then share it with your friends, for the time is near. Shabbat shalom, mishpah. Lehitro. See you later.